Let's go to uh, Kim uh, Belfontaine now as a board member of the Esquimalt Residents Association. You, you've been quite vocal about this. I mean, the Esquimalt Residents Association, uh, you've had major turnout to rallies. Uh, what is your biggest fear here? Well, we have quite a few concerns. Um, I guess we're, we, are, we are fearful that, um, you know, regardless of what is said by by the CRD, um, you know, they have purchased this land and they have some sort of feeling that this is uh, an appropriate site and there's been no justification provided other than it's close. But I asked, did anyone even go out and look at this neighborhood? I mean, truly, what is the rationale for selecting this location? There are residents. There are important and vital small businesses. There's grocery stores. There's schools. Did anyone walk it? I, I believe that, you know, they, they have grossly misrepresented what this area, this neighborhood is by just... Uh, calling it some industrial area, when you only limit your evaluation to the square footage of a warehouse, then that can lead you astray. And I really am very frustrated that um, there's no technical evaluation. There's no, we're still, you know, there's still hiding behind in-camera processes to talk about what's really led them to this decision. You know, where's the technical assessment, the design information, um, the 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 consideration of adjacent land users, the triple bottom line analysis, the environmental and social impacts on, on residents. I mean, this, this is a very heavy industrial activity, and it is completely incompatible with the neighborhood that they are proposing to put it in. Bob Desjardin, you obviously feel the same. You're smiling, though, I guess, that Kim has made a number of points that you have kind of advanced. Were these questions, I mean, you sat in on these meetings, these in-camera meetings, were these questions tabled during this process? Uh, to be very honest with you, at this point, I can't remember the, the exact process other than the fact that as this came forward throughout the process, I tried to bring up the, the uh, situation of this um, neighborhood, uh, I invited the whole committee to do a bus tour to go and see what exactly they were making a decision around. Um, nobody, nobody took me up even on a car ride. I hope they all went. But at the end of the day, they made the de we made the decision, and uh, there were a number of people that were, were very much against this decision. Um, but it was done. It was done without the consultation. It's done. It presupposes the fact that, that uh, McLaughlin will be rezoned. Uh, so there are a number of problems with this whole process. And I think that this crowd, and I want to thank you all for taking the time away from your day. To, this is important to you, obviously. And uh, if only radio could see what who, the, the number of people are here, the, the region would realize this is a significant concern to people and they took their time to come here. The community has been bargaining in good faith for a very long time on the potential of perhaps McLaughlin being part of a regional sewage process. Um, Viewfield was never in that discussion. So when you're this far along in a negotiating process and a consultation process, as, as faulty as that may be in some cases, um, and then to suddenly find out that there's a whole other new aspect of your community that's been included, I felt that it was only fair to stand up and speak out on behalf of the constituents to say, why is Esquimalt having to bear an unnecessary burden of sewage treatment for the region? And if, in fact, this process, if McLaughlin is not the right site, is not big enough, then why are we not looking at something better and more... Is it an unnecessary, though, burden? And, and I'm going to kind of play the devil's advocate here now because uh, I've received emails saying, okay, Stephen, look, look at this situation. Saanich already has two sites that are dealing with with this as well. And if the Hotland ends up being the eventual uh, biosolids energy center, then they'll have three. So Esquimalt's not the only region in the municipality that's essentially uh, carrying its weight. Is, is that a fair comment? And I think that's, that's a fair comment, Stephen, except that we, have, we already have Macaulay. We have now potentially McLaughlin. And the view field site has never been part of the consultation with our community. And in fact, if that is speaking to the fact that the McLaughlin site is inadequate for the kind of treatment we're talking about, 
And let's be clear, I, I think that even the CRD will admit we're not sure what the eventual treatment will be, but if this is not the right site, then we need to find the right site. Let me ask this. Barb, you have to rezone this area, is that correct? Both sites would have to be rezoned. If you, do, if you decide as a council not to rezone the Viewfield Road area, should it eventually be picked by the Capital Regional District, what's the option then of the CRD? Can they not then go to the province and say, we need you to basically overrule this municipality? Well, it, de it depends on where they are in the process. It's my understanding that it has to go forward to the province as part of an amendment uh, to the plan before it would come under the Environmental Management Act. Um, and uh, I'm, we're in the process of making clarification on that. But if that was to happen, the province ultimately could come the, back. The province say. ultimately could come in, which is why we really want to make sure that through this provincial election, people are listening and understanding the problem. And I want to speak to your, your statement about uh, unequitable burden. Take a look at the size of Saanich. Yeah. And take a look at the size of Esquimalt. We are a four by seven kilometer community and we are built out. We don't have that rural space to provide buffer. So it's not an equal comparison at all. Let's put uh, Mark Eugenis on the spot. If the polls hold as they appear to be doing and if you are so lucky as to form the next government and this gets to this eventuality that uh, the province is asked to step in and basically force the Squamalt to take this uh, biosolids energy center on Viewfield Road. Would an NDP government back that up, or would they would they uh, would they would they force a squamble to take it? I guess that's the question. Well, I would say at this point, uh, of course, we don't know what the outcome of the election will be, but I think that the role of the provincial government in partnership with municipalities is to make sure that we don't get to the point where we are having to come in and, and overrule communities on the process that they have undertaken. So let me say that there's a couple of things I've already taken action on. Number one, I talked to our MPs, both Randall Garrison and Murray Rankin, and said, can you make sure that uh, the money from Ottawa is secure if this process takes us longer. And they have gone and done that work and had an assurance. I'm waiting to have that in writing from Ottawa to say that they will guarantee the money, their, their partnership will be there if the process takes longer. I will say if we form government that the province will then guarantee the provincial money will also be there if the process takes longer and that we will relax the timelines if necessary to get the right plan. But I'm not, hear, I'm not hearing you say to, you know, I'm not. No, sorry, Steve. We need to work in partnership with the communities to get the right location. I don't think we need to go down the route of forcing this onto the community at the CRD level and then having to overrule them. I think that the job at the provincial level to work with the CRD is find a better site. Right? So, there are, there are I, I, get, in there. I, I agree with you, but I guess, uh, and I want to be very careful because I'm used to listening to politicians on my show not answer my questions. And, um, and, th and that is a very eloquent speech. But I think the people here, bottom line, want to know if the COD says this is the site and the Scrimalt will not rezone it, would an NDP government force the biosolids center on I would Squimal. not imagine why any provincial government would ever do that to a community. But would an NDP government do it? No, absolutely There not, we go. Stephen. So you as a, a, a team, the Capital Regional District, uh, and the people that have kind of been looking, charged with taking this plan forward, you don't know yet if it will smell or whether it won't. Is that a fair answer? I, <laughs> I'm, just, I, I'm just trying to, I mean, people want to, those are simple questions people I hate know. to be categorical about it. We, you get promises from engineers, and they swear up and down it's not going to smell. Uh, but despite that, you do get reports from residents. But there, this, this, is, it, this is a tight site. There's absolutely no question. The, it'll be a big building occupying it. But on the other hand, there's a lot of technology to make sure that, that sites don't smell. Bob Desjardins, you wanted to make some comments about an earlier comment on the program. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that Esquimalt ha has uh, been always very open to the idea of resource recovery. Uh, we have championed that from the beginning. And the fact is, is that uh, we still would like to see that kind of a process occur. 
And we did receive a proposal that, that looked at resource recovery for the McLaughlin site. Uh, and unfortunately, these kinds of proposals and ideas have been turned down at CRD table where, where they're not, they're not being allowed to present the ideas that could go forward for the region. What we're going to have to do is define the parameters of the plant very closely in terms of the um, the level of, of design, the level of appearance, and obviously the, the odor issues and noise issues being being one of the big the big things. But we won't have a specific design of the plant because we won't even know at the time uh, when we're carrying out the consultation process which company is going to be building it. Probably. So as you go forward. Can you understand why perhaps the community is not going to be as uh, embracing of this idea as perhaps you would like? I'm, I, I, I know that um, it's, I know there are concerns. I, I, I have to point out to a couple of things. People have been talking about Esquimalt taking the brunt of this. Clover Point has exactly the same kind of site that Macaulay has now, and it's going to stay there. It has... I don't know if you've ever seen it. It's a sight to see. Imagine big... You don't see it, Jeff. That's the difference. Boy. You have... You have... It, it is... Okay, we have another uh, comment from our uh, group assembled here in the Esquire Municipal Hall. State your name and uh, what's your point? Uh, Carol Witter. Um, I wanted to respond to the first gentleman who spoke that um, somehow that the people here opposed to a site at uh, Viewfield and even McLaughlin are opposed to sewage treatment and resource recovery. And that's just not the case. I know that there's a huge amount of people in this room that have been pushing for resource recovery and a distributed system. I know myself, I've been doing that for, well, since 2006. And I would love to see the CRD take a different approach where they come up with ideas that municipalities would be fighting over to have them in their communities because that technology exists, that uh, possibility and those potentials exist and I think it's just a shame that all this money has been spent and this is where we're at. We can do so much better and we need to demand that. Thank you. We are live from the Esquimalt Municipal Hall, our town hall meeting. It's a packed meeting this morning, and uh, we are now joined by the chair of the Capital Regional District uh, Board, uh, Alistair Bryson. Alistair, as you look out at this room, obviously this is a very passionate issue. We've talked about consultation process, you and I, on CFAX 1070 before. It, it appears to me we need more of this, and we need to be doing it now and not waiting until after the election, which is what my understanding that the CRD is doing. Well, uh, fair enough, Stephen. That's your perspective, and I, I appreciate the folks, uh, everybody that's turned out here this morning. Um, clearly, this is a, a, a forum that uh, is being held in Esquimalt, and I can assure you there, there are many communities throughout the Capital Regional District that have a significant interest in this issue. And we will go there. I can t I guarantee that. Yeah, and so we will, we will hear a great deal of input. Uh, it's going to take some time in order to, for us to gather all that input, and... Uh, Clearly, in, in the face of a provincial election, it wouldn't be appropriate to try to, uh, to do that in the heat of that provincial election. So we have committed to having a full consultation process, and that will involve all of the stakeholders, and we'll be doing that sometime in late May, beginning of June. Alistair has to dash to work. I would say one thing as you're going out the door, Alistair, that uh, I think uh, the ladies and gentlemen in this room, their opinions are going to be the same before, during, and after the provincial election. <laughs> Thank you, uh, and fair enough, uh, there will be other parties that we have to hear from as well. And we'll be doing that. Thank you, Alistair Bryson, CRD Chair. I promise I'll get to your comments as quickly as possible. We just have a few minutes left in the program. Introduce yourself, sir, and your statement. My name is Eric Lindquist. I'm a Langford resident and uh, president of Titus Infrastructure Services. We're the ones that recommended or put a proposal forward to the city of Esquimalt and tried to put a presentation forward to the CRD to turn the McLaughlin Point disposal site into a destination site to build the commercial, retail, residential area in a way that's conducive to generating the cash to help offset the cost of the utility and reduce the taxpayer burden. We did the same thing at uh, West Hills under another company, uh, which was turned down by CRD. 
Uh, we're doing it now with Capital City Centre at the old Colwood Corners, uh, and through a lot of fighting, seemingly fighting with the CRD, they seem to be bending now and moving forward. But I think what we really want to focus on is helping the community reduce their tax burden by bringing in the, the community involvement as well as the commercial element that is nowhere in the CRD proposal today. The CRD has had the technology blinders on. I think there's been a lot of of uh, you know use of the lingo to uh, kind of advance. Um, these these uh, designs or these proposed sites, but it, it's really what fundamentally needs to happen is to take a pause, go back, and relook at, at this whole plan, including including the Viewfield site. It's a ridiculous site, but um, you know, really, what we need is to have uh, something that's going to meet the the larger needs of the whole capital region in the longer term. This this. Uh, proposal is only going to meet our needs for 12 years. And guess what? We get to repeat this whole process again. So which which sites next? Which communities next? Why why is there not uh, the kind of leadership that, that we need to get the right long-term solution for the capital region? Do you think, uh, Jeff Young, and uh, I'll get everyone to kind of weigh in on this, that the Capital Regional District has kind of missed the boat on this, that their communications strategy really has been lacking? I mean, I see no staff members here. We place telephone calls and requests to every, well, I think at least 10 members of the court area, Liquid Waste Management Committee. Uh, you're the only one that, that showed up. I mean, What's going on here? If we're going to listen to the people of the, the region, don't you think that uh, we should be doing that on a, on a consistent basis? Uh, I, I always have a, a slightly different take on public input, I guess, than, than, uh, than I guess the modern, the modern trend for, for formalized input. And there, there is going to be an input process. And, and uh, I think you'll... There will be a lot more information than I can provide for you when that takes takes place, and and uh, I think uh, you'll be able to attend sessions where there, there where there will be uh, technical experts who can who can give you uh, much more background. I I felt that it was important to at least uh, use my sort of average board member's knowledge of the plan to to. Um, explain why we've why we've proceeded as we have Hi, I'm Beth Burton Cron I'm a resident of Esquimalt a property owner in Victoria uh, my comment is for Jeff I would uh, want to know what you think about taking tax money from McLaughlin tax money from Viewfield and then in February come begging for your share of the police budget I would think that Esquimalt would be Victoria's closest political ally and I see nothing but the opposite all the time that point look Jeff uh, Young I, 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 I agree that that municipalities that host facilities uh, industrial facilities should be compensated that I differ with the remainder of the of the board on that. Okay, next uh, point here. My name is Deborah Dixon. I live in Catra Bay. We had the battle of our lifetime uh, over Harrow Woods being cited for a secondary sewage treatment plant. Uh, my concern has always been about the process. My concern has always been for the councillors and directors sitting around the table who wanted to revisit reports that they had just received, didn't have time to review, but were being forced to make a decision. And it always seemed that CRD management, Dwayne Kalinchuk, Tony Brzezik, were always there putting the pressure on. Now, my question is, when this new commission is formed, which is being formed now, I think there's one position to be filled, and that might be filled by Jack Hall. Um, Will our elected officials and representatives have any say to represent the public that has been kept out of this process all along? Good question. Can we get a quick answer on that? My take it is, on it is we're going to have to make the hard decisions about finding sites for the facilities. But uh, once that's done, uh, a lot of the day-to-day -day control will be in the hands of the new commission. Thank you. Susan Lowe, you're running as a Green candidate in this. Right, very quickly, a quick statement. 
Yes, my question is, will the CRD pause the procurement process so we don't continue to contract with bodies to spend millions of dollars while the plan is in such disarray? Yes. Well, I don't accept the premise of the question. We, we, we have a viable plan, including Heartland. We have always said we would be searching for a closer site, and now we'll be evaluating whether we should stick with Heartland or, or use the other site. I've got about a minute left. Very quickly, I'm going to give you 15 seconds. My name is Karen James, and I understand that for large infrastructure projects like this, we should, we should typically have an environmental impact assessment. And now I'm understanding why it can't be done and why it hasn't been done. is because we don't know what our impact is going to be to the airshed, because we don't really know how we're going to deal with the sludge. We don't even know what our impact is going to be to the land. So how can we compare what we're going to do with, with our very tiny footprint that we have right now in the air and the land and the sea? We, I wish we could do longer on this. I promise the ladies and gentlemen here at the Esquimalt Town Hall, obviously you have many more questions. We will continue this conversation. I promise you. Uh, we will be back. I promise you that uh, as this process goes forward.